Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7. So if you're a listener to the podcast for a while, you know that I like to keep things positive if at all possible. And so it's a little bit difficult <laughs> to keep things altogether positive when you see that the majority of the headlines around Solo's box office are that it's a bomb or that the box office crashes or all sorts of various uh, witty <laughs> plays on the fact that it has not lived up to expectations or projections or anything of that nature. At one point it was projected to be making something like $170 million for the Memorial Day weekend and that would have put it well over the record-breaking mark for a Memorial Day weekend movie. Well unfortunately not the case and the dire projections of it not making it to a hundred million for the Memorial Day weekend well thankfully those did not pan out it has crossed the hundred million dollar threshold domestically and in fact it's on track for about a hundred and three million in the domestic box office for the weekend which all right so here's where we go to the whole <laughs> silver lining situation all right first of all that would make it the best performing movie in 10 years for Memorial Day weekend's releases. And you have to go back to 2008, 10 years, I do the math, for the thing that did better than it most recently. And, and, <laughs> shock of shocks, that movie was Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. That one did a little bit over 100 million. In fact, this one just slightly beat it. So if you want to pursue a narrative that says that Alden Ehrenreich did better <laughs> in the Harrison Ford role at the box office than Harrison Ford did, well, then you can do that. Or actually, I guess maybe the better thing would be that Alden Ehrenreich does better as a young Harrison Ford than Shia LaBeouf does, although he was obviously playing Harrison Ford's son in the movie, not actual Harrison Ford, so not exactly an apples-apples -apples comparison, but you get the idea anyway. You know, it still did better. I think when you go back another year, you get to, uh, I think it's X-Men, uh, the Days of Future Past, and that one did better than the way Solo, a Star Wars story, is turning out. But hey, best Memorial Day opening weekend in 10 years. All right, so there's a bit of a silver lining for you. And also, you consider the fact that this is the best Memorial Day weekend as far as a box office thing goes in like four or five years. That's the number I've heard being reported that it's been, you know, like one of the best Memorial Day weekends in quite a while. Well, if you've got the biggest movie in Memorial Day weekend, not history, but in the last 10 years leading that, well, gee whiz. I mean, I think you got to give some credit to Solo for doing pretty well under the circumstances. And, you know, when you look at what's opened the last couple of years, well, You've had Tomorrowland, you've had uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales. Um, what was the other one? Uh, let's see. Oh, X-Men Apocalypse. Yeah, that was the other one. So, I mean, you're talking about, at least with Pirates and with X-Men, those are some serious franchises themselves, and they've all had time to... Um, uh, you know, sit for a while so the whole brand fatigue thing doesn't even come into play. And yet, and yet, they still weren't able to match what Solo was able to do, even with all of the other things weighing against it. Everything from the uh, the brand fatigue narrative to the nobody wants to see this narrative because it's not one of the things the fans were asking for, to the critics' reviews coming... <laughs> far in advance to the whole you know divisiveness of the last jedi being carried into this whole nonsense to the director situation so many different things that could have weighted down and yet and yet it's still doing way better than anything else that we've seen in the last 10 years so hey you know good on you solo all right good on you lucasfilm and the other good thing that you can say is that Comparatively speaking, Solo had a bit stiffer competition than other movies in previous years. So last year was the Pirates of the Caribbean movie, and the next best thing was Guardians of the Galaxy 2 in its fourth week of release. So a lot of people had already seen it, and Baywatch, which pretty much tanked, that was a brand new thing. Prior to that, it was X-Men Apocalypse, but that was going up against Alice Through the Looking Glass, and the second week of Angry Birds, and the fourth week of Civil War, and then Tomorrowland, which just didn't do all that well in general, was only up against Pitch Perfect 2 in its second week, and Mad Max Fury Road in its second week, and the Poltergeist redo. So, 
Yeah, I mean, Fury Road certainly was a big blockbuster situation. So, yeah, that that plays into effect, I would say. But, I mean, with Deadpool 2 doing as well as it's been doing, I mean, yeah, Star Wars did very well against it. And Deadpool actually dropped by, like, 66% versus its first weekend, which is a pretty steep drop, too, for that matter. So... Again, there is a silver lining two or two or three to be found with the way Solo, A Star Wars Story, performed at the box office. That's not to say that things don't look dire in terms of its final performance and what that means as far as Lucasfilm actually making any money on the whole darn thing, whether you're talking about the production costs or the marketing costs or what ultimately has to get paid to the movie theaters or anything like that. So far, it seems like they're actually going to be in the red for the first time on one of their movies in the post-Disney acquisition era. But, eh, you know, they've got a lot of time to make up for it with all sorts of other media initiatives and licensed products and all that sort of thing. So I don't think we need to be shedding too many tears for Lucasfilm as a business in this regard. And I got to tell you, I saw Solo for a second time and it rewards a second viewing. And we'll talk about that later in the week. But uh, I think that it's unfortunate that it has to have some of the media narrative that it has. And unfortunately, the box office performance is not helping it get away from that media narrative. In fact, it's kind of reinforcing it to some degree. And that is going to do it for our inaugural Jedi business slash scoundrel business episode for Solo A Star Wars Story. And if you check out the audio version of the podcast over at sw7x7.com slash iTunes or wherever you like to listen to podcasts, well, then I'll have last Jedi trivia for you over there. For now, though, it just remains for me to say thank you so much for watching and may the Force be with you wherever in the world you may be.